Friday afternoon, everyone. My name is Lee McQueen, and this is Blue Green Fusion. Welcome to the fifth episode, and this is Blue Collar Jobs for a Green Economy. Uh, today's topic is the blue, uh, not the blue, but the Green New Deal. Um, this show was also going to be about Buckminster Fuller, but what I've discovered is that there's so much information to fit in one show that I decided to move the Buck Mr. Fuller portion down the schedule and I'll give a schedule update at the end of this show. Um, first I wanted to go ahead and um, thank our guest from the previous show, Gunnar Olson, who is the public information officer for DART for coming on the show and giving us a scoop about the $10 million grant they received for the new transit hub. Uh, he's a public information officer for DART, and he spared some time on the day of that announcement to come to the studio, so I'm really glad about that. And I'll give another update about um, those events later on in the show as well. It's not moving to the yellow camera, so I'll just read it. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, it's saying that Iowa could land a new biorefinery. DuPont Danisco Venture considers Story Webster counties for cellulosic ethanol plant. And this is coming from the business section of the Thursday Des Moines Register. And it goes, DuPont and Danisco say they're considering Iowa for a new cellulosic biorefinery that would produce up to 50 million gallons of ethanol annually. The new facility will use corn stover, corn cobs, and other corn plant residue to make ethanol, commercializing technology developed at a pilot plant in Tennessee. And this is according to Jennifer Hudson, uh, Hutchins, the group's spokeswoman. The group has filed a request with the Iowa Power Fund, seeking nearly $19.8 million, and the companies would invest $255.7 million, the state said. The other article that came that came from the same section of the of that newspaper is bright airy feel permeates Aviva's new headquarters. During the last show, I I think it was the last show, I read an article about Wellmark, an insurance company affiliated with Blue Cross and Blue Shield, who built a new um, uh, structure in the downtown area that just. Uh, started moving in new employees and had considerable amount of sustainable and green energy features with it. So this is Aviva. They located their plant out in West Des Moines. They're also insurance um, from England, I believe, is their affiliation. And so they just finished their headquarters and it's been in the news and I'll just read a little bit of something about that too. Bright airy feel permeates Aviva's new headquarters. The West Des Moines building also stresses workers' comfort and environmental friendliness. Most of the building's workspace is in wide open floor plans. The unobstructed layouts funnel 90% of available daylight into the interior of the building, said architect Jason Christ of HKS in Dallas. Aviva's builders have applied for leadership in Energy and Efficiency Design, or LEED, gold rating from the U.S. Green Building Council and expect to hear later this year whether they will receive it. So green building is taking off quite nicely uh, in the state of Iowa. I'm very pleased to see that um, it's become significant not only in the private sector where builder, builders are actually taking pride in their green building rating, and actually making efforts to build sustainably. But then also, um, as I'll uh, mention later in the show, our two, our two top contenders for governor also paid quite a lot of attention to that issue, which is a good thing. More on Aviva. The architects positioned the eight-story glass and steel tower on an 88-acre site to take advantage of natural energy from the sun, as well as to catch the attention of drivers at the intersection of Mill Civic, Mill Civic Parkway and Jordan Creek Parkway. Like the new 650,000 square foot building that Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield built in downtown Des Moines, Aviva's architects paid a lot of attention to employee comfort and health. 
Both companies have priority parking for carpool and low emission vehicles and provide bus passes for all employees. Both buildings have a number of features that were built with recycled materials and which encourage employees to recycle, including composting equipment that turns food and other organic waste into a brown powder-like material that can be used for landfill sites. The two projects have one other thing in common, the 1,300 1, Aviva workers and 1,600 Wellmark employees who used to work in the new buildings used to work in downtown buildings, although the Wellmark building is still downtown. Um, the moves by the two companies vacated roughly 750,000 square feet of office space in downtown Des Moines at a time when there is already more than 600,000 square feet of unused space in the downtown core. And that is a significant uh, point that the register did make about the vacated space in our downtown area. The downtown area of Des Moines it has uh, suffered quite a loss of revenue due to occupants relocating out to West Des Moines mostly or surrounding suburbs are shutting down because of the high cost of rent relative to the low, lower uh, or an unfortunate uh, result in revenue. And a lot of this does have to do with uh, a diversion of industry out into West Des Moines. So while I am very grateful that more builders in West Des Moines, um, like Aviva, are um, building green, um, I, I, I admire, again, Walmart for staying dedicated to the Des Moines proper uh, metro area and um, establishing a tax base much needed uh, to bolster downtown uh, retail value, property value, and attraction to people who um, do business downtown or uh, work in the downtown area. Okay. So I'm going to go through another headline, and this is from USA Today. That's Thursday, October 21st, and the title is Tallying BP Spill Toll on Wildlife Habitat. Putting a price on a brown pelican is like trying to put a price on a sunset. Along the Gulf Coast, scientists from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and their state counterparts are counting dead and oiled wildlife, testing water and photographing marshes and shorelines to document damage done by the oil spill, which followed an explosion in, on the Deepwater Horizon oil rig and the blowout of BP's well. And you'll see later in the show the significance of that uh, when I read another article, or actually mention another topic about, well, I'll just go ahead and mention it now. The White House did lift its ban recently on oil drilling in the Gulf. It, it had been halted due to um, BP's um, uh, oil spill um, um, during most of the spring and summer, um, but now it's apparently um, okay to drill in the Gulf once more. And that's uh, an interesting uh, decision made, and we'll see how that plays out. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and focus more on Des Moines news. Um, I did want to mention that um, there were a few highlights from the show from when Gunner was here, the new transit hub um, that Dart's going to break ground on. It should be starting spring 2011, so next spring. Currently the project does have half of the funding needed. They got $4 million from the state of Iowa and then a $6.5 million grant from the Federal Transportation Administration. So that's really good for the state of Iowa. Uh, it's good for the Des Moines area. It's good for jobs. It's good for transportation. And I'm looking forward to it. Um, I think it's a laudable goal. I'm glad to see it. And the Des Moines Register did pick up on that too. And this is from Thursday, October 21st. Uh, U.S. Senator Tom Harkin and U.S. Representative Leonard Boswell joined the Federal Transportation Administrator Peter Rogoff on Wednesday in officially announcing a $10 million grant for the Des Moines Area Rapid Regional Transit Authority to fund the construction of a transit hub. 